Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It is so sweet. I, I, I'm a little bit lost. A, in joyful, joyful, we adore thee when that broke out in there. And then the reading, like Philippians 2, part of that reading, I was like there. I was watching the exaltation and it was good. So mm. Merry, Merry Christmas. I, I don't know as you have prepared for Christmas, buying presents and getting things together, if you've come to this conclusion, I've come to this conclusion that the world we live in is getting more fake by the moment, more <laughs> fake. So not long ago, I bought two new SD cards for my camera and that, that's a hobby of mine. So I buy the best SD cards money can buy, the best brand, all of that. And I get these SD cards, I put them in my camera and I was, I was out taking some pictures and, and they're buffering kind of slow and they, they, there's no way it should buffer on my camera. I'm like, well, what's going on? So I send them to the manufacturer, lifetime warranty kind of thing. They get them, they say, oh, these are fake. The label on them didn't look fake. It was, it was that label. The box they came in didn't look fake. It was that box. The store I bought them from was a real legitimate store. But evidently, in 2023, 8% of everything you buy is fake. Doesn't matter if you buy the brand name shirt in that store. Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> it was only 1.75% in 2015. So that is ever increasing. I don't know about you, but I get friend requests in social media context regularly. When I get a friend request, the first thing I have to do is research. Is this a real human being? Do I know them? Even if I know them, is it them or is it just a clone of them that someone stole their pictures and is pretending to be them? I get emails every single week. If I get an email about a bill that needs to be paid or software that needs to be updated or something with my account, to be honest, I just assume it's fake at this point. I start to research it and try and dig into it and I just delete it without opening or clicking any kind of link. Fake all around us. If I read a news story, I don't, I don't just trust it. I have to research it to find out if it's true. If I see an image or even see a video, I don't know if that's real. The number of, of videos, you, you see someone making a speech, but it's actually not them and those aren't the words they said. You have to research constantly. Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> this summer, family vacation, Deborah and I, we're, we're on vacation. We actually were back in Minnesota for a little bit in Duluth. And our plans shifted. So we're staying in Airbnbs and stuff. Our plans shifted last minute in one context. So we got a new Airbnb last minute, like within an hour in Duluth. And so we go to it. And we walk in and it, it just surprises me because it's way beyond my expectations. I didn't know what to expect with last minute booking. We get there, it's this big, beautiful kitchen. It's got this island in the middle with this enormous bowl of beautiful fruit. I'm a fruit person. I'm like, oh yes, there's a balcony outside that looks over the whole town and over Lake Superior. We open up the balcony and I'm looking out. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And Deborah's in the kitchen. She goes, would you like a piece of fruit? And I'm like, certainly. And I turned around and she had this unique spark in her eye. I will just say that. <laughs> she she hands an orange and she tosses me an orange and I catch it in all of its plastic goodness. <laughs> it didn't look like plastic fruit. I thought it was real fruit. I thought the whole thing, I thought I could smell it. It looked so good, but it wasn't. It was fake. Orange, you glad you didn't eat it? Ah, uh, was... I'll be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we bring this up because on this Christmas, we want to give you a real present. In fact, two real presents of Christmas. The peace of Christ. And the reality is, is that this world offers lots of peace or, or things that go by the name of peace. But they're not, they're not true. They're as fake as that snow is that you walk through on your way That's in. Arizona snow. Arizona <laughs> authentic hair growth. snow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you should use it. Uh, <laughs> I should. I should. I'm looking at my future right there. <laughs> uh, all right. We're gonna, I'm going to take you to to a passage in scripture, probably one you didn't expect us to go to on this Christmas Eve, a passage that talks about fake peace. Fake peace actually peddled by, well, people like Greg and I, by, by priests, religious people, 
offering fake peace. Here's what the prophet Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 6, 13. From prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They're, they're selling you peace, but there is no peace. They have healed the wound of my people lightly. My people have a, a serious malady, a silly, serious injury, and they're just putting a little Band-Aid over it. They're, they're acting like this, this, these little words that they say, they can make everything right. They deal with it lightly. Saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. See, you can... You can sell false peace. You can sell, a, well, a, a fake peace, a conflict avoidance, a measure of niceness, of, you know, put on a smiley face and just pretend peace. That kind of peace can exist. You might, you might have actually a, a Christmas gathering over the next 24, 48 hours that you're you're already, the, the wheels in your head are turning because you're like, Uncle Carl's going to be there. How are we going to maintain peace at this thing with Uncle Carl? What, what are the conversations, like, get a, you know, weather, NASCAR, football, like, wh wh where can I go to, to steer the conversation to, to avoid conflict and maintain peace? But that isn't real peace. It's a veneer. It's a fake peace. And I think we, we all know this in our hearts. And the reality is that we can sell this peace with one another. We can sell this kind of fake peace with God. You, you come, you, you pretend, you look nicey-nice in front of God. You think you do religious type of things. And No, no, no. That's not the true peace of Christmas. Jesus comes to bring intimate, vulnerable, true, transparent peace between us and him and then us and the world. There are people who have a fake peace and they just keep their lives so busy they never have time to actually consider matters of the soul, deep things of life. There are marriages that have fake peace. They have tossed out intimacy a long time ago. They function more like roommates. And everything is fine as long as they don't talk about actual serious issues of the heart. The problem is we all know that's not real. We all know that's not satisfying. It's like a, a little kid who's asking his mom if she's okay. M -m Mommy, Mommy, are you okay? Yeah, I told you I'm fine. Everybody knows that's not fine. There is fake peace all around us. But Jesus offers us shalom. Mm. A whole peace. A peace in our souls, in our spirits, in our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies, a, a wholeness of peace. Now the peace that Jesus offers, it's harder to enter into. Hi, my name's Greg Levine, and uh, by nature, I am an avoider. Here's the deal, I like people to like me. <laughs> I want people to like me. And so if I, if I think there's a conflict where someone might not like me, then I beat around the bush. I, 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 I'm not direct. I don't go into it. It's not in my nature to go right there. I just want to be nicey-nice and scoot around and have everybody like me. Now, you might be thinking, well, I'm not an avoider. Sure, you might be an attacker. Mm. Or maybe you're just a shut-downer. But Jesus invites us into shalom. Listen Listen to these words in the New Testament. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. All this is from God, who through Christ has made peace between us and God. 
and then given us the ministry of taking peace to other people. So we would suggest there are two Christmas presents for us to open this night in Christ. The first is this, peace with God. This is where it starts, peace with God. The reality is, because we're selfish, we want what we want when we want, want it. it. And because God is holy and pure and righteous, we're separated from God in our sin. And so he sent Jesus to absorb our sin into himself, to die in our place and pay the price for our sin so that our sin could be washed away. And then he gives us his righteousness that we can have peace with God. And it's not, a, it's not a peace where God puts up with us. It's not a peace where God just tolerates us. It's a peace where God delights in us. He lavishly loves us. He He's wanting to spend time with us. He absolutely delights in you. Do, you. do you know that? Do you believe it? Do you rest in it? Do you have it? And it's not just a peace in our spirits with God. It goes way beyond that. It's a peace in our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies. So many people today want to change themselves, who, who they are, who they were made to be. Here's a reality. Some people are born big boned and some people are born small boned. Some people are born with brilliant minds. Some people are born with more simple minds. Some people are born with athletic gifts. They can run like the wind. Other people, a little bit more clumsy. God didn't make a single mistake, not one. You have Down syndrome, you have, you have mental health issues. God didn't make a single mistake. He knit you together perfectly. We can have peace with God in our bodies, peace with God in our personalities, peace with God in our, in our heart, in our soul, in our will, peace with God spiritually. Jesus Christ has come to bring shalom, peace with God, nothing between. Here is a gift of Christmas, peace with God. Mm. Do, you, do you hear that and want that? Like true, true shalom with God this Christmas? You know, the, the fake peace of the world is, is microwaved. Like my prayer for you tomorrow is that you don't have to eat a microwaved meal, right? Like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the microwave, but, it, but it's yes, not. Yes, there is. Well, okay, maybe. <laughs> but if you have something in your crock pot, I guarantee you, it's going to be better. It just is. God has had in his eternal shalom crockpot, cooking for all of eternity, his rescue plan for us. His plan of making shalom with us, those who were at war with him, he has brought peace in Jesus Christ. God made flesh so that we, that we could be made at peace with him. That's the first gift of Christmas. The second gift is this, peace with people. Peace with people, not just, not just peace with God, but God has given us peace with others. Did you catch the second half of that sentence in 2 Corinthians 5? And gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He has come and brought peace between himself and us, and then he has given us the ministry of peacemaking, the ministry of reconciliation. And again, this isn't, this isn't just a veneer. This isn't just a niceness, a pleasantness between other people. It's a deep, intimate, vulnerable connect, connection that he intends for us. True community, true warmth. And we get to be agents of that in this world. So a week and a half ago, I was communicating back and forth with a good friend here at church and communication was, was going and as it went, I just realized that he, he, he just kept asking questions. I was pro providing explanations and explanations of the explanations and there's nothing wrong in what he was asking. There was nothing wrong in his tone. The questions were, were totally fine. But, but I kind of just got to this place, just an oversensitive place in my heart where I just felt exasperated. I just felt, oh, I just, like, just worn out. And I just realized I gotta, I gotta pick up the phone make a call. So I call him. 
I said, just, this is just where I'm, I'm at. I'm just, I'm struggling right now. And, and I get it. You haven't done anything wrong. He immediately is just brokenhearted. I'm so sorry. I had no intention to, to make you feel that way, to make you feel attacked or, or mistrusted. I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? Absolutely, I forgive you. There's nothing even really to, to forgive, but thank you so much for your heart. This is, this is a reconciling heart. And then, and then that Sunday, a week ago Sunday, we finish services, and then he catches my eye and makes a beeline toward me. He throws his arms around me, gives me a tight bear hug, just with tears flowing down his face. I'm so sorry, John. I'm so sorry I made you feel that way. A minister of reconciliation, of deep, authentic, true, humble friendship. This is the peace that God has brought us into the world to make in this world. On that Christmas morning 2,000 years ago, the angels opened the heavens. And they said, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, peace. Jesus Christ had come. The son of God, son of man, the promised one from eternity, eternity, and he had come to bring peace. And so our prayer for you this Christmas is simple. We pray you have some great presents under the tree tomorrow to open up. But I promise there will be no present you can open up that's better than these two this Christmas. The gift of peace between you and God and the gift of peace between you and others. That's the gift of Jesus Christ for you this Christmas. Let's pray. Lord, how good are you to us? You came for us while we were far from you, while we were still rebellious and rejecting you, and you mercifully came and you brought peace to us. Lord, would we be those who receive the peace that you've offered us and be peacemakers, reconcilers in this torn world. There's so much fake, God. We want the real thing. So give us the real thing this Christmas. And we pray this in the name of the one who can make that happen. God of God, light of light. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. It's in his name we pray. Amen.